The angels of God guard us through this night and silence the powers of the shadows. The Spirit of God be our guide to lead us to peace and glory. By God's great mercy, we have been born to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. psalm for tonight is psalm 50 and here's a paraphrase god cannot hold back god has kept quiet long enough but now is going to speak up god gathers us around the table sitting us down so we pay full attention to these words you are my family but you're you bringing me trinkets will not make a difference when i think of all you have done which harms your siblings which causes creation to cry and the baked goods As much as I have a sweet tooth, your cakes, pies, cookies do not feed the hunger I have for justice. I know how you like to bring up rules for others and to take my words and misuse them to try to get folks to do everything your way, but you need to stop, please. And stop using my name to try to justify all those silly political viewpoints you have, all the ways you mock others, the put-downs you put on those that I care about. So listen up, pay attention to the cries of the forgotten, go out and share your gifts with those who have nothing. Work for justice more than you do for the so-called rights of knuckleheads. And when you do all this and more, then you will have given me exactly what I long for. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Then I invite you to join with me in the prayer of confession. It's found printed in the comments, if you can pull that up. Let us offer our lives to God. God of Easter and all the days after, the finery has been put away, the candy all eaten and baskets put back in the box. The flour have been tossed out in the bin and we are tempted, so tempted to forget that we are Easter people. Called to lies a grace of hope, of love, of justice. So in your mercy, loving God, forgive us and fill us with the spirit of Easter, now and always, we pray. Amen.
The Old Testament reading tonight is from Ezekiel, the 11th chapter, reading verses 14 through 25. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Mortal, your kinsfolk, your own kin, your fellow exiles, the whole house of Israel, all of them, are those of whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, They have gone far from the Lord. To us this land is given for a possession. Therefore say, Thus says the Lord God, though I remove them far away among the nations, and though I scatter them among the countries, yet I have been a sanctuary to them for a little while in the countries where they have gone. Therefore say, Thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. When they come there, they will remove from it all its detestable things and all its abominations. I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh, so that they may follow my statutes and keep my ordinances and obey them. Then they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose heart goes after their detestable things and their abominations, I will bring their deeds upon their own heads, says the Lord God. Then the cherubim lifted up their wings and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God was above them. And the glory of the Lord ascended from the middle of the city and stopped on the mountain east of the city. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea, to the exiles. Then the vision that I had seen left me, And I told the exiles all the things that the Lord had shown me. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. And then the gospel reading tonight is from Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 17 through 24. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things in the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father. For such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then, turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. If you've ever worked with kids, if you've ever been around kids, you know that they are the ones who are willing to ask the questions that all the adults have, but seem too scared to ask. I've discovered over the years that it's usually the teenagers, sometimes the ones who are university aged, who are willing to ask those tough questions, the challenging questions, the questions that are critical to them as they seek to understand this thing we call faith. And one of those questions that I've gotten over the years and a variety of forms, different words, different ways of expressing the question is simply, what does the Bible have to say to me? What do these words that were written thousands of years ago have to say to me? Why should I read it? Why should I listen to people read it? Why should I pay any attention to it? It's full of weird things, things that seem impossible to believe, things that just seem historically inaccurate, scientifically impossible. 
And it's true. It is full of things like that. Because the Bible was written by people whose scientific knowledge was very rudimentary, who didn't understand history, didn't write down history. They told stories. In telling of the stories, they would inflate things. A battle might involve a hundred people, but it was thousands and thousands. They exaggerate things. They go into hyperbole. They inflate stories and that sort of thing. And yet if we get past that, if we pay attention to this old book, if we pay attention to what's being said, then we discover that these words that were written and spoken thousands of years ago still speak to us. They t still speak about our human condition, even in 2023. Look at Ezekiel, written 3,000, 3,500 years ago, words spoken to people who are in disarray. They've lost everything. Part of them have been part of the nation. Most of the nation has been captured and taken away into exile, while a small remnant remains in Jerusalem. They're questioning where is God in all this, just as we question where is God in the sort of difficulties and circumstances and struggles that we face. They see the heartache, the pain. They see leaders who are not leaders. And the most, and Ezekiel says to them, God's aware of this. God says to the prophet, I know what's going on. I know how you feel. You're surrounded. You're led by people who could care less about you. They only care about themselves. Their hearts have turned into stone. They don't care. They don't care about you. And yet God says, I will crack open. I will turn those hearts of stone to dust and I will give them hearts of flesh, hearts that care, hearts of compassion, hearts of justice, hearts of hope. That's what we long for in our world, isn't it? We see leaders, political leaders, religious leaders, economic leaders, school leaders, family leaders, neighborhood leaders, whatever it might be, bosses at work, whose hearts really are hearts of stone. And we don't know how to deal with it. And the danger is that our hearts will gradually begin to calcify, to harden, to turn into stone. And that's when we hope that God is doing what God promised Ezekiel would be done. That God would take those hearts of stone that are developing inside of us and crush them turn them to dust and turn our hearts into hearts of flesh and hearts of love, hearts of peace, hearts of justice, hearts of grace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Guard us, O Lord, is the apple of your eye. Hide us in the shadow of your wings. Lord, save us. Save us while we are awake. Protect us while we are asleep, that we may keep our watch with Christ. And when we sleep, rest in his peace. Alleluia. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Lord, save us. Save us while we are awake. Protect us while we are asleep, that we may keep our watch with Christ. And when we sleep, Rest in his peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. In the silence of these moments, 
wherever we are. We think back on the day and can see those ways in which God sought to soften our hearts to make us more caring, more loving, more patient, more just, more accepting. We learned that way through the modeling of other people's lives, through the words they spoke, through the ways that they treated us and touched us and cared for us. And so in the silence of these moments, let us offer up that prayer of thanksgiving for all God's goodness and grace in our lives. Eternal God and Father, under whose mighty and gracious protection all our days are spent, we thank you for the mercies of the day that is now past for the continuance of so many and great blessings, for any good examples we may have seen, for any good words we may have heard or read, for all holy thoughts and right desires which your Holy Spirit has this day put into our minds. O Lord, grant that these may not be unfruitful in us, but may work in us that for which you sent them. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. And then we lift up prayers for others in these moments, for ourselves, for our world, for our families, for our neighbors, for our communities. There's those broken places in our hearts, in our lives, in the world. We think especially of the ongoing tragedy in the Ukraine, in the Sudan, places where people have been affected by terrible weather. We think of families that are recalling the pain of the tragedy of the mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas a year ago today. We think of all those places that need healing and hope. And we lift them up. We lift up those who could be more compassionate and more caring. We pay especially for leaders at every level for their gentleness, their wisdom, their hope, for their hearts to become more hearts of flesh. We pray especially this night for the ministers, elders, and members of the churches in Lincolnshire. We pray for the communities of faith represented by those gathered here, people who seek to be faithful and caring and loving their neighbor. We pray this night for the Reverend Martin Ferris, as he recovers from surgery for the Reverend Cecil White, also recovering from surgery. We pray for the Reverend Nigel Atkinson, for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. We pray for Father Andy Monia's parish priest. We pray with the <coughs> Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davidson for their daughter Susie. With Liz for her great nephew Ryan, as well as for her daughter Emma, and as Emma cares for her young son, Leon. We pray for Cheryl and for Prince and the family as they continue to care for Cheryl. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and our grateful, as always, for Liz and Ruth as they continue to care for Mike. We pray with Irene for John. We pray for all who grieve the passing of loved ones, especially those who grieve for the Reverend Tony Jones, in particular his wife, Hazel. For those who grieve for the Reverend Michael Forster, especially his wife, Jean. For those who grieve for the Reverend Stan Crane, especially Pete and Jenny and the extended family. And we pray for those who grieve for John Davison, especially Jean, Brian, Claire and the family. And in the quiet of these moments, we would lift up those prayers that we carry in our hearts and can only speak to God. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are made weary by the changes and chances of this leading world may repose upon your eternal changelessness 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together using our own words, our own language, our own tradition, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, and as we forgive those who sin against us, save us from the time of trial and lead, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you now and forever. Amen. And may you rest in God's good grace and love this night.